All right. Hello once again, everyone. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College online AWD or application and web development, 1100 C Sharp programming class for the spring 2024 semester, I've been doing a series of video presentations. Now, most of these presentations have been based off of the PowerPoint slides that uh, come with our book for the class, which is Miroc C Sharp 8th edition. In addition to those presentations, I've also done presentations where in the first 11 chapters, I built a uh, payroll application that got bigger and bigger, and we added more and more functionality. Then in, in chapters 11 to 16, I basically changed it so that it became more more an employee application than a payroll application. Um, then when we got to chapter 18, I did a couple of examples of link. And now we're in working with uh, databases starting in chapter 19. I did one thing where I came in and I went in and I used a different relational database management system, a different RDBMS, that being MySQL or MySQL. Now, why did I do that? Because I wanted you to be able to compare and contrast, for lack of better words. And I also want to mention that, well, you know, I, as I'm getting up in years, that um, I forget things. So I went out to the W3 Schools tutorial out here. All right. And that was here, right there. And you know this by now as well as I do. We don't need any of this. That we can just come in there and let's set our font humongo. There you go. So why am I showing you this? Because I wanted you to know that when I forgot, for example, how to go in and how to create a database, there it was. All right. When I wanted to know how to create a table, there it was. When I wanted to know how to run the different kinds of CRUD operations, for instance, going in and writing a select, there it is, and insert, there it is, all right, and update, there it is, and finally a delete, there it is. Okay, now when I look in here, we also, I mean, they have on their tutorials, when we look here, they have a tutorial for MySQL. There isn't one for SQL Server, which has always kind of surprised me, but it is what it is. So I'm going to look, and I'm going to bring up the one for just Learn SQL, the tutorial, because I think some of the ones in there are going to be pertinent or will be able to use with what we're working on now. All right. The other thing I want to mention to you, and I may have said this before, I may not have I honestly do not remember. And that is that if I go and bring up, this is, um, let me just back up here. This is the book. All right. And from the book, I'm, I'm all I'm bringing up is stuff that you have. So this is from the student download database. And you'll notice there are there is a database here, MDF, Microsoft Database Format. I think that's what it stands for. And there's a log file, too. But the one I'm more concerned with is this, is this top one. Because what it shows is how you can write <clears throat> different things in here. And this is for SQL Server that we're using. All right? Now, Later, we might even work with this database. I don't know if we do in one of the later exercises or not. But, all right, I wanted that up there so it was something that you could see. The other thing, too, is there are a lot of good resources out there. So I'm going to come in here. And if you remember, one of the things that we did at the beginning of the semester is we came in and we used the Visual Studio Installer. All right, you may remember that, you may not. All right, and we've got Visual Studio 2022, etc. And there's other stuff in there as well. All right, there was other stuff in there that was available for us. Now, I don't know why, but it, it changes like this. But the reason I'm telling you that is one of the things that we added 
at the beginning of the semester was database support. So if I go in here and I go down to Microsoft SQL Server 2019 is what mine is showing. All right. And I'm going to go there and I'm looking in here and there is SQL Server Tools. So there is SQL Server Profile. This is the one I think we're going to end up using. All right. And that is Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So I'm going to click on that one right now. I was going to go back and look it up online, but, you know, I'm just going to try it myself and we'll see what happens. So there it is. SQL Server Management Studio. And I'm going to try to replicate some of the stuff that I did earlier. Now, when this comes up on your screen, and hopefully it will, all right, I would recommend that you hit the print screen key, take a picture of it. Let me show you why in a moment. This is what I'm concerned with here. So I'll draw a little thing around this. And what I'm showing you here is this is my server name. This is my username in there. Now, my, I can show you this. You don't know my password or anything. And it doesn't matter anyway because yours will be different. But when I want to connect to SQL Server, I'm going to click this Connect button right here. And now in here, it's going to show me databases that I have. And there's a whole boatload of them. Don't worry about that. This is what I've used for other classes, etc. If yours is totally empty, just fine. All right, but if you notice, this is all in the alphabetic order. And I don't have one in there that I can see that's called Employee DB. So I'm going to replicate some of the stuff that I did earlier. So I'm going to right mouse click on databases. I'm going to choose new databases. And it should come up and ask me for a name here. All right. And I'm going to type in here employee DB, just like that. Now, there's other stuff in here. These are all, all this stuff that's in here. All right. Notice logical name. And it's got employee DB and it's got a log file that it's creating with it. And it's telling me that basically this is the database. This is the log file. All right, I'm not even sure what regroup means, to be honest with you. The initial size is zero. There's nothing in it yet. All right, and it says auto growth 64 meg. I don't think I have to worry about that either. And it's showing me the path. But I'm most concerned with the owner is the default, which is me, and I now have employee DB. Once I do this, I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit this refresh button here and I'm going to check that and see if I have a database in here that's called employee DB, which I don't have right now. So I'm clicking OK. And actually, it looks like it went down there at the bottom. But I believe that if I refresh here. All right. And I go back and close this and reopen it. Well, I'll still put it at the bottom, but I don't care. That's fine. All right. Now, I'm going to show you a few things here, okay? All right, right now, if I go to tables, there's no tables. There's nothing in it. It's an empty database, all right? So I'm going to show you how I can populate it. It's going to look similar to what I did before, but previously, when I brought up this stuff for the SQL server, when I brought this stuff up, I basically just set everything up for you. All right, and I'm going to do some of that stuff, but I'm going to do some of it differently, and I'll explain why as we're going along. So I'm going to go here to employee, all right, and I don't want a new database, all right, and there's different ways that I can do this in here too, just so you know. I can come down here where I've got tables, and I can right mouse click and choose new table, all right, so I can do that. Or I can come over here and I can right mouse click and choose new query and write a query that's going to be very similar to the one we did here. Now, when I created the database, I did the equivalent of this. 
And now I'm going to do the equivalent of this, but I'm going to manually write this. Now, why am I manually writing it? I want you to see what happens if you're creating a database yourselves. All right, so I'm going to knock this down. And in fact, I'm going to make it smaller as we get going, but I'm going to go to tables here. I'm going to click new and I'm going to click table. And it brings up this kind of table editor right here. All right. So when I bring this thing back up, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fields. All right. An employee ID, which is an int, and it's a primary key that does not allow nulls. So I'm going to start here with employee ID. All right. The data type will be an int. So I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to choose an int. It'll be in here someplace. There's int. I do not want to allow nulls, so I will uncheck that. I want this to be a primary key. Now, how do I do that? Well, if you look down here, all right, I've got some properties for this. And I'm going to lift this up so you can see what I've got down here. All right. Well, the first thing that I care about is I believe that if I click over here and I right mouse click, I can choose set primary key. So that made it my primary key. But the other thing I wanted to do, if you remember, is I wanted it to automatically increment. And when we did this previously, we typed in auto increment. You do not do it like that for writing SQL Server databases. You instead go down to where it says identity and you click this arrow here and it says is identity and you say yes one one so what that just did what i just did right there was the equivalent of when i went over here and i said auto increment why there's two there all right so that's the first thing all right then we've got first name and last name that are both chars so coming down here, first name, and the case list that you choose is up to you. This is going to be a var char, and I think I made it 25 last time. So I'm going to make it 25 again. And I believe I didn't allow nulls for anything, so I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to go down to the next one, and I'm going to have in here last name. It'll again be a var char. And varchar, again, just means variable character length of 25. And again, we won't allow null. So we've got three fields in here so far, these three. All right. Then I want social security number. Sock, sec number. And we're going to make this a char. And this was a char of 11. Because, again, if you set up somebody's social security number if you do set it up and let's just pretend for a minute that yours is 111-22-3333 as an example then it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven characters so that's what we're expecting all right, so I'm going to make this just a char of size 11. And again, we're not allowing nulls. All right. All right, what do we have left then? Address, city, state, and zip code. All right, I'm going to start with the address here. All right, and I'm going to put in address. And I think we made this a var char of 50. And again, we're not going to allow that. Now, this is where things are going to change a little bit. All right. If you noticed when we did this, we had a hell of a lot of duplication in here. Right now, I've done all this. First name, last name, social security number, address. And this is what's left. But notice how many times Belleville is in there. As an example, notice how many times St. Louis is in there. Technically, if I had to put St. Louis in there one or more times and left off the period after ST, it would technically be a different city 
than this one would be. All right. So what I'm going to do now, normally, I, what I'm going to do right now, you probably wouldn't normally do it this way. I'm just telling you this right now. All right. And that is the following. I can break and I can have other tables. Now, it would be really kind of ridiculous to try to have a table and in that table have every city in the United States. I don't know how you do that. There wouldn't be thousands. There wouldn't be hundreds of thousands. There could be a million or more. But for now, just to show you how that can be done, I'm going to make a table that's going to have just the three cities in it. All right? So this is going to be a little, done a little bit different in, differently in here. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to make another table for the states. And that'll have 50 entries in there, as you'd probably guess. All right. And finally, finally, I'm going to have these. Now, now that I think of it, maybe I won't even have one for states because we've already used the abbreviation. All right. IL instead of Illinois, etc. But I'm going to put one in here. I want to have at least two tables. All right. So Belleville, I'm going to do this in 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 um, alphabetic order. Belleville is going to be one. Highland is going to be two. And St. Louis is going to be three. All right. Now, don't worry about it. We'll fix that in here in just a bit. That's no biggie. But what I want to show you is in here, we're going to call this city ID. And it's going to be an int. And we are not going to allow nulls. All right. Then we could do a state ID. All right. But for now, I'm trying to keep it fairly simple. So I'm just going to do state. And that's going to be a char of size two. Again, no, we're not allowing any nulls. And finally, we'll have zip code. Now, you know that zip codes are a little funky in that, in that they can be number, 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 or... Or they can be number, 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 dash, number, 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 number. All right. So I'm going to put this in here as a varchar 10. Because that will handle either one. Whoops. Either one of those situations. And again, no nulls. So this is my table. In fact, what you see right here, and I'm going to take a picture of it. I'm going to blow it up because I want you to see it. All right, so let me grab this. There's nothing that's been saved yet. I haven't saved anything. So if I made a mistake, I could go back and add things, remove things, whatever. This is my table right now. In fact, what this is referred to is my table schema. Now I'm looking at this, and I've got var binary. Those should have been var char, so I'm going to change all those. But I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fields. Out of those eight fields, two of them are numeric, employee ID and city ID. These will be in just a minute. Notice I spell that with a capital I. I got to fix that too. But that should be var char, var char, variable length, one to 25 characters. This will be a variable length, one to 50 characters. This will be a fixed length of 11 characters, a fixed length of two characters, and a variable length of 10 characters. So let's fix these. Glad I didn't save it. So this one here should be var char 25, not 50. I could make it 50. Nothing wrong with doing that, but I'm going to make it 25. This is going to be a var char, and again, it'll be 25. First name, the I, I don't want capitalized in first. All right, I've got a vibrant binary here. And so again, this will be a var char. All right, and I believe I believe now everything is correct. I'm going to come down here again and do another print screen. And I'm going to go back to here. And I'm going to paste that in. And again, I'm going to come over here. And there it is. So I'm just going to bring this up right here.
All right, so there is, again, this is referred to as my relational database schema. What it is, is it has the name of each column. All right, it has the data type of each column, and it has some of the constraints. All right, size constraints with some of them, the non-int fields, as you can see, null constraint, and a primary key constraint. All right, now, this city ID that we put in here, this is going to become important because I'm about to make another table that I'm going to call city. And it'll have two fields in it, one that says city ID, all right, and one that says city name. All right, so bear with me, if you will, for a couple minutes. Now, before I do this, this still has not been saved. All right, so I can come over here and I can say save table one, and it asks for a name. All right, and I'm going to call this one, it's under employee DB. I'm going to just call this one employee. So I now have that, and if I refresh here and I look under tables, I now have dbo.employee, and I don't even remember what database their dbo stands for. It's database something or other, okay? I don't care. Now, I can close this because it, I've saved it, and I'm going to go back to tables again and do another new, and I'm going to do another table. And this one's going to have first in here city ID. It's going to be an int and it will not allow nulls. The next one will be city name. Don't put spaces in here, all right? It'll be a varchar, and my guess is 50 would be more than sufficient. And again, we won't allow nulls. So we've got these two fields in here. And again, we will come back to our city ID, right mouse click and set the primary key, and just like we did previously, we'll come back for the city. We'll go to identity specification, where it says, is identity here? I'm going to double click to set it to yes and one and one. All right, so that's now set. So I now have my two schemas. I haven't saved this yet. I will in a moment. But again, I'm going to come in here. Grab this. And there's that one. All right. Okay. Now I want to show you why I did what I did. First, let me come in here, right here, and let me save it. And I'm going to save it as city. All right. So I now... When I come back and refresh here and look under tables, I now have DBO city and DBO employee. All right, and now I wanna show you why I did what I did. All right, I'm going to go back to where I had this stuff right here. All right, this is what I saved from the last one. Okay, and I wanna do my insert now, and I believe I'm gonna be able to do it the same way here. I'm not sure but we're going to try it anyway. I'm going to try to do this insert into employees, but but I'm going to change a few things. So I'm going to bring that down to here. In fact, let's make a new, we'll just make a new one here. Um, and I'm going to, I'll just grab all of this. All right, not the, not the query so far at least. All right. So you already saw when I did the create database what I did. You already saw what I did when I created the employees table. So this became then, because it was a little different, so I made it, I capitalized. You, It's not that important the way you set that up, all right? With some of them, it'll automatically capitalize or lowercase, all right? I think that, for example, I believe that MySQL lowercase is everything. All right, this city became city ID and its size instead of a varchar 20, all right, um, became an int, 
All right. Okay, and in here, for the primary key, we did, I believe it's like identity one comma one or something like that. I could be wrong, but I think that's about the way that it's set up. All right, so we had that one. Then we created another table. And we call that city. Now, again, I didn't do it this way, but I'm showing you the equivalent of what I did. So that has city ID and it had city name. And I may or may not have even capitalized city. It isn't that important. All right. So again, all right, primary key, et cetera. And then city name. And I said, I think we said this was 50. I don't remember. And again, we were not allowing nulls. All right, so that's the equivalent of what we've done so far. Now, I want to see if, I, if this will work, except I want to make a few changes here. What do I mean? All right, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to highlight all this, okay? And then I'm going to do a search and replace, and I'm going to look for Belleville, and I'm going to replace it with the number one. All right, that's the first city that we have in there. So all these should become a number one. So replace all, and it looks like it worked. All right, now that's not a, that's no longer, I should have gotten rid of the double quotes. So let's see if I can do that. So I'm going to replace double quote one, double quote, comma, with one, comma. Let's see if that works. And I think it did. Then I'm going to come and do another one, all right, where I do another search and replace. This time I'm going to replace double quote Highland, double quote comma, with two comma. There's only one that gets replaced there. Finally, I'm going to replace double quote Saint period space Lewis, double quote comma, with three comma all right and you can see i've trimmed up my table now all right it's not that this is a big thing but i'm just trying to show you what's been going on here and i'm, I'm a little squirrely about lining stuff up so oops I like to be able to look at everything because this is a small, this is a small database with 20 records. I mean, in real life, you could conceivably work with databases that had thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of records. All right. So everything looks cool as far as I can see. All right. Now, the other thing I want to do, I'm going to just grab this and I'll grab three. If you don't know what I'm doing, again, please just watch. And I'm going to say insert into, I think we called it city, not cities, but I probably should have called it cities. If I didn't, I think I'm going to change the name of it. We're going to make it cities. Typically, your database names are going to be pluralized. And we're going to have in here the ID and the name. Well, we don't have to put in the ID. We shouldn't have to. Just the name. And in fact, that's so small that I can put this all up here like that. And then values, and there'll be three of them. All right, so number one, remember, was Belleville. All right, two, remember, was Highland. And three was St. Louis. That better be put in double quotes if I want it to work. Strings, string values are put into double quotes. All right. So I think this is all okay. Now, 
I don't know for sure. Notice I did call it city. It should have been cities. My fault. Not only that, another reason is I've already got a field in here called cities. So that should have been cities. I think I can just go in and manually change the name. That's what we're going to try to do right now. All right. So I'm going to right mouse click on this and choose rename. And I'm going to change the name from city to cities. All right. And it looks like it's okay. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to come up here. All right. Now I do want to add data. So I don't know if I go to employee here, if I can go to, uh, I could go to, to design and I could look at what I've done. Okay. That's fine. So I wasn't sure on something and I can also go here and I can go to just table. Now I can go in and add things manually. Okay. I can go in and add manually. Well, I got 20 records and I don't want to add them manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here to employee DB. I'm going to right mouse click and choose new query. All right. And it should bring a window up in here. And then what I'm going to try to do is to put in those, those, what I put in here. So I've already got my city. So this can now change to cities. All right. And that can be employees. Okay, I'm going to try to do this insert, and I don't know if it's going to work or not. This is, again, how I would do it. This is how I would do it if I was working in uh, MySQL. Now, the good news is if it doesn't like this, it's going to go red on me, and it's going to show me a bunch of errors. All right, so I'm going to comment, copy that, and then I'm going to paste it right into here. All right, and when I do this, the good news is it's not showing me any errors. Well, now it is. So let's look and see what it's showing me. It says invalid object name employees. All right. So it doesn't like something that I'm trying to do here. That's all right. Invalid column name, first name. So it doesn't like anything that I'm trying to do in here. This should have been city ID. All right, so there was a mistake in there, too. All right, so if I tried to run this right now, and I run it by clicking this green button here that says execute, but you can see how many errors it's flagged here. It's basically flagged every line. All right, so rather than run it and get a bunch of errors, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go to the Internet, and I'm going to say SQL server insert query example all right and i'm going to let this let our friends here from google figure it out so it's insert into let's see sql server insert example now this is what i did insert into in the table name then in parentheses i had the name of my fields i think this is what i did at least let's look so insert into employees all right it doesn't want this uh parenthesis here yes it does insert into and then the name of your fields that's what I've got here. Now, this is weird. I've never seen anything like that, but I want something like this. All right. Now, if I just say values, this is one thing I can do. I can just come in here and say values. So insert into this and I can get rid of this like that and I can say values. All right, but if I do that, I've got to add every one of those in myself. All right, I don't really want to do that, so I am going to bring it back to the way it was. So, all right, I am going to run this. I don't expect it to work, but I am going to run it to see if I do what error or errors it gives me. And this is my error area down here. Let's try to move that up, but we'll see. So let's try to run it. 
and I get invalid object name employees. Well, here's the problem. I called it employee. See that? Let's again right mouse click on this and rename and let's change that to employees. All right. Now, if we come back and let's put this whole thing in here again, I'm going to remove it and then add it again. So I'm getting rid of it and I'm going to re-add it. All right. It still is giving me errors, but now for employees, it says invalid object name employees. And I want to see if it does give me that. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to refresh. Okay. And I'm going to try to run this again or execute that query again. All right, invalid column name, John. First name, John. Last name, Doze. Um, it's, it's showing me that for every record. So everything that's in here is being flagged as being wrong. All right, so invalid column name. So first name, last name, social security number, address city id state and zip code i thought that was what we had in here let's double check that to start with all right so employee id which we're not using because it should be automatically being filled for us first name last name social security number address city id state and zip code all right so i'm not sure what the problem is so I'm going to look for another example, not the one that we just looked at, but I'm look, going to look for a different example of SQL server insert statement with examples. And let's see what we have here. Insert into, that looks very similar to what we did. They want single quotes and not double quotes. I believe that's the problem. Let's see. All right, I'm going to get rid of all this. Again, I'm going to go back to my example that I have here. All right, and I'm going to do another search, replace, and I'm going to replace every occurrence of a double quote with a single quote and say replace all and i'm going to see what that does that fixes it makes it worse or whatever all right so copy that paste it in well i still have a problem here but if you notice none of these are now wrong and that's good all right so let's do right here Let's try to execute it and see what we get. It says invalid column name city. All right, that's all. And that's good because we changed that to city ID, if you remember. So this one here should have also been city ID. In fact, if I do it, I should do it like this because this is the way that I used the capitalization, although this should be, again, case independent, all right? It should be case independent, but I'm trying to make it look the same anyway so you can see exactly what's going on here. All right, so let's grab this, copy it to the clipboard, come back up here, remove this, and paste that in. Again, as far as I can tell, all these look okay. And it doesn't look like it likes this still. But I'm going to run it anyway. And it says 20 rows affected. And what that means is it worked. How do I know it worked? How do I know that that worked? First of all, do I want to save this? That's up to me. All right, this is a query. So I will save it. You don't have to, but I will save it. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to call the query here. All right, I'm going to call the query fill employee 
table.sql. All right. I didn't have to save it, but I did save it. So I've got that. Now let's look at the other one. So insert into cities. And it, again, it'll be the city name with this stuff. Hopefully, now that I do this and I know what my problems were before. Whoops. Hopefully this one will go slicker. It's nice and small, so there really hopefully won't be a problem with this. All right, so copy. Now, was this called city name? Yes, it was. So this one should work right away. So I'm going to go back again to employee DB, go to new query, and paste that in. All right, then I'm going to click the green thing here to run it. Three rows affected. Now, again, how do I know this worked? Well, first, let me save this query. Again, I don't have to save it, but I am. I call the other one fill employees table. And I'm going to call this one fill cities table. Okay. Save. All right, now to make sure that this worked, I'm going to close this and I'm going to come in here and write another query. I'm not going to save this one, but I'm going to type in select star from cities and then run the query by clicking the execute button. And there are our three cities. I don't know if we can make this bigger or not. All right, but there they are. All right. Now, if I come back again and do select star from employees and run it, there are my 20 employees. All right. So what I'm going to do, let me check my time here. I'm at 42 minutes. And what I'm going to attempt to do in the next 20 minutes or so, and I'm not going to save any of these. So when I get done, I'm not going to save these. So I can do that. If you want, you can come into here and click. Uh, I thought there was a clear all. Maybe there isn't. Okay. So tables and messages. I guess there isn't. That's okay. But I'm going to come in here and try to run some of the same queries I ran before. Some will work as is. Some will not. All right. So this is from the old one. So I'm going to save this as sqlserver.txt. And I'm going to go back to my MySQL here, and I'm going to grab these queries. There were 16 of them, I believe. And I'm going to copy them and try to bring them into here. Okay, so taking them from the top, all right. The first one says select everything from the employees table. That should work like a charm, I would think. We've already done that. All right. So select star from employees, run it, and there's our employees. Again, I'm not sure why it's giving us that. It says invalid object name employees. I don't know what the problem is there, and just putting in a capital E isn't fixing it. See that? So that was the first one. Next, select the first name and last name only from the employees table. Again, I'm not saving any of these. All right, so first name and last name from employees. Run it. There's my first name and last name. So that one worked. Next, select the first name and last name only. Order by last name ascending and first name ascending. So again, I'm going to do this with the order by. Again, I could put ASC here and or here, but since that is the default, I shouldn't have to. So there's that one. There they are, Adams, Black, Brown, Bryant, etc. And if there's matches, Jones, Jones, notice Benny and then Dick, White, White, Bill, and then Kent. So all that's worked so far. All right, select everything 
from those employees who live in the city of Belleville. This isn't going to work. Now, we do know that the ID is 1. So we can say we're ID equal 1. We can do that. Select star from employees where city ID equals 1. And if we run that, we get our employees and notice the city ID is 1. Now, what if we don't want that? Okay, what if we want the first name, the last name, the social security number, the address, and the actual city and the state and the zip code? All right, and I'm going to show you that right now. But again, I want to make sure that I'm giving you the right syntax. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in SQL server, SQL server join query example. All right, join query. And there's two ways of doing this, just so you know. All right, I want to do an inner join like we have right here. All right, I'm going to grab all this, and I'm going to, believe me, it's going to change quite a bit in just a second. All right, so that'll work. It already did, but I'm going to come in here. Now, I don't care about the top 100, but I'm going to select in here E dot, I'm going to make it a little E, E dot first name, E dot last name, E dot address. What is everything that's in here? We've got what? We have first name, last name, social security number, then address. E dot SOS sec number, E dot address. Again, I'll put it on multiple lines so you can see it. All right, now we want city, state, and zip, but we want the city to come from another table. So C, C dot city name, E dot state, E dot zip code. All right, now we're getting this from two different, we are getting this from two different tables. So I have to say from, from employees, but we don't want to type employees, employees dot first name, employees dot last name. So we created what's called an alias by putting an E in there. So that should work. And now we want to say inner join because we're bringing in the other table and that will be cities which we called c and then we have to tell it what we're joining on so on i'm just lining stuff up here you don't have to do that of course so on where e dot city id equals c dot city id now that actually should work let's see you'll know because if i did it right all right you're going to have the first name the last name the social security number and the address all from the employees table then the city name from the city's table then the state and then the zip code if this works i'm going to show you yet another way of doing it So come in here, paste that in, run it, and you'll notice now we've got the states. I'm sorry, the cities. All right, we could do this, just to make it a little nicer, and do an order by um, C dot city name, and then E dot last name, and e dot first name 
just to make it look a little cleaner when we run it. All right. Now we've got all our Belleville, then our Highland, then our St. Louis. And all of our Belleville people are in order based by last name. And if there's a tie, then it's by first name. So I'm going to grab this. Whoops. I'm, this one I am going to save back in my copy over here. Okay. Now, one more thing that I want to do here. That is to show you another way of doing this. What I just showed you right here is considered to be newer. All right. It's considered a newer way of doing it. All right. I'm going to show you the old-fashioned, older way of doing it. it. All this is the same. The select this. But now I'm going to say from employees E, comma, cities, C. And I'm going to get rid of this inner join. I'm going to get rid of the on. And I'm going to replace the on with where. All right. So you can see if you look there the difference between these two ways of doing it. If this works, I should have the same output as I had previously. And if I screwed something up, you'll know it right away. So this shouldn't change. And Belleville, Adams, Ties, Bill, Kent still works. So that is yet another way of writing that same query. All right. Now it says here, Sort them in last name, my ascending order. That one's no biggie. We've already done that. All right. In fact, I'm just going to repeat this one. Right there. And we wanted the people who were in Belleville. Okay. So select. Uh, I guess we do have to write a little bit different stuff. We only want Belleville in here. So let's copy that. Let's bring this in. All right, so inner joy on this. And I don't know if it's order by where or it's where order by. I think it's where here. So where C dot city name equal Belleville. Belleville. Okay, so let's see if that works. And if we get just the city, the people who live in Belleville. To say I'm doing this off the top of my head is an understatement. All right. Incorrect syntax near the where. So it didn't like this. So let's see. It, and I think that the query is okay. It's the order in which I put this stuff from this. I don't know if I move this where up like that. If that'll work or if I'll get another error. Doesn't like that either. Now it's near inner. I think I got it. It's got to be before the order by believe that this is now the right syntax. I'm looking for just my people from Belleville to print. Okay, now it's not finding it. Where, so let's see, first name, last name, social security number, address, city, state, zip code, from E, join on the cities. I spelled Belleville wrong. Good gravy. All right, so let's grab this. Copy that to the clipboard, run it, and there are all my Belleville people, the six from Belleville. Good job. So we'll put that in there like this. Now, this is everybody who does not live in Belleville. All right. And I will do it the same kind of way I did it down here. I believe that these ways will still work, but I'm not positive. All right. So I'm going to bring this in here twice. I don't know if these both work or not. I'm going to say, first of all, not equal like this. A less than followed by a greater than. So we'll see if that works. Okay. 
and we've got Highland and St. Louis, so that worked. And then let's come down here, and we're going to use an exclamation point equal for not equal. All right. And run that. And again, we get everybody. Good deal. All right, so we're six down, 10 to go here. Select everything from those employees who live in Illinois. All right. So we can do this. We could do a join to bring in the city, or we can just leave it like this. All right. Select star from employees where um, state equal Illinois. Then we'd have to order it by the city ID in descending order of the last name and the first name. <clears throat> And these are Illinois people. One was Belleville and two was Highland. Okay. Now it says order by city ID in descending order, so it did. Okay. We could go back and put the city in there. I'm going to leave it the way it is. I'm already up at close to an hour here. All right. So show all employees by last name in ascending order. Fine. order by last name. So there's, I'm going to jump through these very quickly. So there they are in a setting order. If I put in here again, DESC and ran it, now they'd be in descending order. All right. So by social security number, again, this is ascending. That's ascending social security number. And again, if I put in here DESC, that would be descending social security number. All right. All right. So you can see those. Now, this is city in ascending order. So let's select star from cities. Order by city name. Okay. And we can see Belleville, Highland, St. Louis. And again, if we did put DESC in here, it would just reverse the order. St. Louis, Highland, and Belleville. All right. Show him all employees by state in ascending order. Again, this is just a lot of review, which I think is a terrific, terrific thing to do. So there's by state. Now notice the ID goes one, two, one, 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 etc. These are all Illinois people. These are all Missouri people. So that was fine. Again, if I do DESC and run it, now my Missouri people will be first, followed by the Illinois people. Next, by zip code, and this will be by zip code in ascending order right here, and if I wanted to, I could again do it in descending order, like that. All right, now, um, Let's go here to Bobby, Bobby Gold, and we're going to make him Robert Gold. We're going to change that one. Okay. And the reason for that is this said to update, but I don't have that in there anymore. I don't have the error in there anymore. So I'm going to update employee ID 10, and I'm going to change their current first name. of Robert, of Bobby, to Robert. Now, when you do an update, 
all right or you do a delete you better have a where in there or you're going to replace everything so this is update employees set first name equal to Robert where all right it's employee number 10 all right then to, to check it we'll run that query so let's do this and you'll notice that the syntax is the same and it's the same whether I am running this in MySQL or I'm running it in SQL Server. One row affected, so that should have worked. That's what you're always looking for in there. And then to check it, we'll have this. And it should now show Robert instead of Bobby. Robert Gold, it was Bobby Gold. Okay, so 13 down, three to go. Next, we're going to update the employees and set the zip code to 63333, where the city is Belleville. There should be, I think, six records affected if this works. Invalid column name. Okay. If I'm doing it on employees, it's got to be city ID and not city ID equal Belleville. It's got to be city ID equal one without the double quotes. Six rows affected. All right, we'll run select star from cities where city ID is equal to one. And we'll see if their zip codes have all been changed. Have these zip codes all been changed to 63333? And you can see they have. All right, two more, and then we're complete with this. Add yourself into here. So first name, last name, social security number, address. This will have to be city ID. Now, I'm going to have a problem. I can do all this, and I can change this, but if I put this as a 3, I'm going to get an error because I don't have a 3 in my cities table. So let's do an insert first. So I'm going to insert into cities. Remember, the only thing in there was city name, values. Now I can put in here, Wentzville. That should work, and now I should be able to put a three in there. So let's try them both and see if I screwed up at all. One row affected. Now I can always just do this to check, select star from cities. You'll notice it's all lowercase, works just fine, and there's Wentzville. And it's four, not three, so that is screwed up. All right, so I want to, oops, I want to come back in here, put me in, but I'm going to be in there as a four. So this should work. I don't see anything that looks wrong in there, but we'll see in just a second. All right, and I can already tell there's a problem with the other one, but we'll fix that right away. All right, so incorrect syntax near into. I left the I off of insert. All right, invalid column name, etc. cetera. Uh, insert into employees, first name, last name, social security number, address, city. Oh, I've got the double quotes in there. So that's where all these errors are. All right, so let's fix those. Let's cancel out of there and we'll fix it right away. I 
I believe in MySQL, you can use double quotes or single quotes in here, but in SQL Server, it is expecting single quotes. Again, all string values then, or var char or char, must be surrounded with single quotes, and all numeric values do not, are not. And remember, this here is not a number. It's a zip code. And it would be legit to put in here dash 1234. That's legit. So let's try to in, run that query. See if I've got any errors now. One row affected. That's good. And then we will test that that worked by saying select star from employees where city ID is equal to the number four. Because that was the one for Wentzville. And that should bring me up. And there I am. All right, and finally, the last one was to delete from employees where the ID is 21, and you can see my ID indeed was 21, so this should work just fine. One row affected, and if I run select star from, I can do it for all one line, from employees, you'll notice now that it shows the 20, but I'm gone. Whether I'm working with MySQL or SQL Server, like we're doing here, either way, if I come in and try to add a new record now, the new record will be added with an ID of 22. Since I removed ID of 21, it's gone. It's lost. All right. So that should be everything in here. So when I come back, the plan is... I'm going to start going over chapter 20, and we're going to talk about Entity Framework Core. I'll see you shortly.